thanks everyone, and thanks to Din for uh, opening up the floor to some of similar similar work that I've been working on. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, really, I'm going to probably approach a bit more of a high level, talking about introducing concept um, that's that's. Uh, that I've been involved with, and specifically looking at instrumented infrastructure applications. Um, so first off, I'm, I'm uh, based at university um, right now in Canada. Um, as of this January, I was there. Uh, but as of last year, I was working on this project here at the CSIC at the University of Canada. And in collaboration with a number of, of partners, um, and I have to really acknowledge one of the contributors, um, you know, I, I kind of draw, drew the short straw to present this kind of work today. But really, I think uh, a number of us could have presented uh, this paper because it really was a collaboration um, with this work. So, um, talk a bit about background, an introduction, about, talk about a, a brief case study, um, similar and related to the, the work that Din just presented. I'll talk about a data centric engineering. Well, one of the approaches, some very, I would say, preliminary results, and then really the future applications um, and, and ongoing work that we've been we've been looking at. Um, CSIC and Allen Turing Institute collaboration uh, began back uh, well March 2016. Uh, this project we termed instrumented infrastructure, um, and it was uh, instrumental. Of March, Din Hun Lao, Alistair Gregory. Duffy, myself, and also Harris, Alex, who is in. We all sort of explored this, this, this collaboration. Looking at, really looking at bridge monitoring and assessment, how some of these metric engineering techniques um, might be used. And we looked at uh, bridges, existing masonry rail bridges. So I was on the new build side, and Harris was on the masonry side. A number of selected outputs and, and publications have out of this in the last uh, last couple of years, um, and so I wanted to sort of bring us back a bit to why we were why we were doing this and and where we can potentially go with this, um, and and really it is a work in progress and it's working definitions you'll see. want to look at so bridges, buildings, pipelines, our roadways, even our communication networks, they represent really those vital linkages, right? Which are um, and our every country is really future is really strongly tied to the long term viability of infrastructure. This is kind of a recurrent theme I'm sure you guys have seen throughout this week. Um, different stages of the infrastructure life cycle: planning, design, construction, commissioning, service life maintenance, and finally the decommissioning. These are all stages we're really used to, and um, in this. We're focusing a lot on service life and maintenance and monitoring, but really they're all pretty much interlinked, right? They're critical to this life cycle chain of our data. And some of the things we're talking about have a real, um, uh, a real opportunity to influence all of these, all of these linkages. Really, they determine the whole life performance and, more importantly, the. Now, let's think about modeling engineering systems, or actually even just our bridges, our ways. We typically use, right, in research and in practice. So can we come, and come up with a model? Maybe there's a closed form solution. Even that we use something more, more simple. Um, can we look at physical tests? Can we, can we have? we're getting as well operational of actual structures in service in performance as we've seen and um, and and the health monitoring has helped us with that so sort of several different sets um, of, of information and that's sort of born into this idea of infrastructure sensing so on the monitoring side um, so increasingly these robust and sort of becoming more prevalent sensing is allowing and, and, and more infrastructure assets to be to be instrumented. So the idea of a, a self-sensing structure now that's instrumented with sensors can can you know how they're stressing, deflecting, how they're changing. 
uh, set of whole life data, right? So throughout the entire life, even at the point of decommissioning, all this, all this data is very, very valuable and it has the ability to enable infrastructure to function at its maximum efficiency. Right? end goal and a lot of what CSIC promotes is we want to use this data to promote um, uh, more sensing and increasing volume complexity of data I'm starting to see things are starting to really take off in terms of human number of studies back to engineering systems right so this is just more of a summary uh, of sort of some of the, the, the techniques that have, have been applied to understanding engineering systems. So typically, right, until this research, I was just really in this phase here, right, doing, doing an FE model and, and very advanced FE models potentially and a variety of work that you can do with FE modeling and predictions that go into it um, that we can use to better understand um, engineer systems, so a model-driven approach or physics-based approach maybe. Then, of course, a data-driven approach. So as we're collecting data from sensors through operating structures, through experimental tests even, right, we're just using that then to make predictions. But at the end, we want to get predictions of future behavior, right? And that, that's, that's really what we're after is these predictions. Then, of course, model updating is sort of become a combination of both as well, right? So it's the idea of you, you've come up with a but sensors data from the sensors, what you've learned from the sensors, and parameters and values and boundary conditions, material properties, constitutive models, uh, to get a better match, sort of, right, to, 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 to improve your, ultimately, your finite element model, your, your, your numerical model, outputs now a new, updated, better prediction, right? So what we're looking at, and, and I mean, we've loosely termed it data, what I think we're sort of uh, we're, we're tying into here is a subtle model. We're, we're taking data from sensors, we're taking predictions from physics models, um, and really, as Din has alluded to with sensors, that there's uncertainty behind both, right? And, and matches pretty well, there's still uncertainty. Sensors, the actual, that's the deflection, but. We can never really tell if that's the exact deflection of a bridge. And now instead of pumping that out back through our FE model, well, what if we had a hybrid model in between, statistical model, say, uh, and then we make a prediction from that. And so that statistical model now allows us to sort of, again, just quantify the uncertainty and balance the uncertainty in both systems in both models to um, predi predict or to have better predictions. I'm not going to say it's better predictions, an alternative. Um, so a while back, I asked the inevitable question to Mark Girolami, who is the director of the data-centric engineering program at the Turing Institute. I'm like, well, what is data-centric engineering, Mark? Have we, is there a formal definition? Can we, can we all agree on something here? Uh, and so myself, Dan, Mark, and a few of us uh, did a paper. Um, it was an invited paper. Defined it sort of for the first time, but it's... it's the working definition, um, which we call data-centric synthesis of approaches to studying physical engineering assets, which leverages now mathematical, physics-based, a finite element, which are updated and refined based on measures from the actual physical, physical asset in operation and statistical data-driven model combined this knowledge with empirical data. We're, we're leveraging back and forth what we realize is there's uncertainties in the background. Um, so having some physics there to, to back up, we're not just relying exten like, um, extensively on the data. Still much at the heart of our predictions. Um, this is the same project that Dennett presented, except the different bridge. So we actually instrumented um, fiber optic, so we instrumented with fiber optic sensors separately. On, uh, on an operational bridge. And I'm choosing this definition, this example, bridge. So we want to start some. Uh, we installed them at several locations um, in the paper itself. Huge, huge density. It's a part, part of a larger study. So, we also 
like this data set, because we have operational data, mental data, and we also were looking at numerical, simple numerical models and actually closed form analytics. Plastic beam. At Watt University, which had um, the sophisticated most pale sleepers. Um, also, a former colleague of mine, he got involved as part of that same paper, did a very detailed, complex, essentially, that test that, test that up also was meant to mimic exactly the, the same conditions on our bridge as best as possible with kind of a very older older of a complex solution and there's still a lot of um, assumptions behind but um, we decided to see how we could work from there. Um, so, as mentioned, there's several which are basically the same idea. There's a lot of the assumed loading and boundary conditions, all the material issues that we currently um, encounter. So, as a first trial step, um, and even this seemed very complex at the time. We want we can propose a statistical model or a, a data centric model, say, from the closed form analytical solution and the experiment could potentially. Um, and so um, we looked at, um, I should say that my colleagues at the Turing used several, several approaches. One, Gaussian processes, all right? So a Gaussian process model, basically it's a model for a continuous function. Um, and they've taken it a step further. So typically Gaussian data-driven approach, right? And it's, a, it's a form of progression, also a form of machine learning, as I could argue. There was a last paper recently by some, some other authors that To synthesize with measurement data itself. And so this is what we use as a framework for modeling more than one connected variable via a Gaussian process. And so a connected variable, what do I mean by that? So we have this, this link, this function f of z is linked somehow to another function u of z. And in our case, we looked at the um, that you it's close for a model with the back calculated curvature was kind of our, our linkage that how we used to link within the sort of uh, uh, our, our simple loading our ramp function. so we these these um, these pre-stressed concrete sleep well beyond their service condition, uh, looking specifically at, at 25 structures, or at least at the, the, the higher end of it. So we, we said, well, let's just look at data at that, and let's look at it spatially distributed uh, at the locations where we have our, our points. And our um, analytical model there. And so basically our physics-based prediction of what we have distributed of our individual just point-based sensors, right, that eh, they came pretty close actually when, when, when we looked at the model. So could we now and these are pretty press some of these results. So what you're seeing here is basically in the dash line, there's the original physics-based model. You see some of the, the data points that have their own, um, have their own uh, variability and uncertainty around them. And then you have this line, this red line, this predictive line that's pr trying to sort of balance part of the physics prediction with the measured prediction. And then we have, of course, what you get with Gaussian progression. You can get competent 
and you can have some uncertainty quantified around the structure. So the idea would be to start putting in more sensor points in here, or if you refine your physics based model further, these, these, uh, these uncertainties um, would start to increase. So with three sensor points, really course, um, a lot of additional tuning and refinement is still going and required. So um, I'll output Gaussian process regression. Now you can't, you don't just look at necessarily um, the analytical model, with the sensor data, you can add in a third data set. So maybe your, maybe your actual uh, field monitoring data, for instance, right? And you're that to capture the same thing. And is there a balance between all these three data sets that you could systematically include in a statistical framework? Um, and so in the paper, we've proposed one potential And then finally, one big thing is demonstrating of a similar model um, as applied to full-scale and operational engineering systems, such as the bridge that Din talked about. And a very recent um, publication that was uh, from Mark Giolami as well as from colleagues here at Cambridge have proposed sensing statistical FE model um, in a bit of a seamless way. Um, and I, I've hesitated to use it because I think it's not going to be, we can't really find it. Um, similar idea, a real-time updated FE model through the statistical that's one example of it um, as the bridge, as the bridge ages and, uh, and progresses throughout its life. So applying both of these two. To, to, to instrumented infrastructure. Okay, <laughs> that's it, thank you.